Hello, my name is Jerry Bant with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video covers how to display and modify the EEPROM settings on call management system Spark servers. First, I will go over some slides about the EEPROM settings, then I will demonstrate how to display and modify these settings. EEPROM parameter settings only exist on CMS Spark-based servers. The majority of the Solaris servers used for CMS are Spark-based, except for the Netra X4270. This server is x86-based and therefore does not have EEPROM settings. So the information in this video does not apply to the X4270 server. Most required CMS EEPROM parameter values are set automatically during installation, but at times some values may need to be manually changed after the system is installed. The EEPROM command is used to display and modify the settings. It's located in the slash user slash sbin directory. Also, you must be logged in as a root level user in order to modify the settings. But any Unix login can display the current EEPROM values. I will demo how to display and modify the settings later in this video. Also, some settings will display a value of data not available. These settings do not affect the CMS system operation and can be ignored. To change a setting, use the EEPROM command, followed by the option name, the equal sign, and then the option value. I will show this during the demonstration. The CMS Software Installation, Maintenance, and Troubleshooting Manual, or SIMT for short, contains a list of all possible CMS required EEPROM options and the setting values. It can be found on support.avaya.com. The next slide has a copy of the table found in the current SIMT guide, but you should reference the latest manual on the website in case there have been changes after this video is published. Also be aware that not all settings in the list will be available on all Spark servers. If a setting does not show up in the EEPROM display, then it is not available for that server type. For example, there are EEPROM settings for TTYA and TTYB related to the serial ports, but not all CMS servers have both serial ports. So one set of the TTY options will not be available on a server with only one serial port. This slide shows the options and setting values required for CMS. The list is sorted in alphabetical order. The first column is the option name, and the second column is the setting required for CMS. The last four options in the list are the ones related to the TTY serial ports. As I said before, if a particular server type has only one serial port, then you would not see one set of these options in the display. I will show this during the demo as the lab server I am using only has one serial port. Now I will begin the demo. I am logged into a lab CMS as a root level user. To display the EEPROM settings in alphabetically sorted order, type the following command. Using the EEPROM command with no parameters displays the current settings and values. Piping the output to the sort command will put the options in alphabetical order as they are in the CMS documentation. This makes it easier to correlate the display and the list of settings in the CMS manual. Since the output is more than a screen long, I piped it to the more command. Then a single page displays, and each time I hit enter, an additional line will display. 
you can see that some options, such as boot file, display as data not available. You can ignore any of these options as they are not relevant to CMS operation. Also, this display shows the auto boot option is set to false. The CMS EEPROM settings in the manual show that this setting should be set to true. So in a few minutes, I will demo how to change this option value to true. First, I will hit enter a few times to display the rest of the EEPROM options and values. The display only shows EEPROM options for TTYA. This server only has one serial port, so there are not any EEPROM options for TTYB. Now I will demonstrate how to modify the EEPROM option setting for AutoBoot. To do this, type the EEPROM command followed by the option name exactly as shown in the display, then the equal sign, and the new setting value from the CMS manual. There should not be any spaces between the option name, equal sign, and the new value. The root prompt returns indicating no errors. But to verify, you can use the EEPROM command to display the settings again. From the display, you can see that the auto boot option was changed to true. Now I will hit Q to exit the more command. If you incorrectly type an option name or possible setting value, the EEPROM command will display an error message and the change will not be made. Option names and setting values must be typed exactly. I will demonstrate by trying to change the auto boot option value without putting the dash between the auto and boot. The command displayed invalid argument and invalid property error messages and then returned to the root prompt. I will display the EEPROM settings again to verify the auto boot option was not changed to false. The display shows that the auto boot option is still set to true. This concludes the video on how to display and modify the EEPROM settings. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.